Assalamu alaikum. So as you can see from the title, this has nothing to do with business or what I normally talk about. It's about jeans, okay? I was supposed to share this story a few months ago, but I forgot to. Don't know what happened. Got busy. Anyways, um, so where do I start? Well, I'll start with the fact that I didn't grow up as a Muslim. I, my family are Shia. Um, my mom became an atheist when she had us. Um, so we went through many religions. We went through Christianity, Hinduism, um, Buddhism, Jehovah's Witness. We touched upon Islam, but I didn't like Islam at all. I actually grew up hating Islam. Yeah. I have another confession to make. I thought Hinduism, I thought Bollywood. Guys, <laughs> I thought Bollywood was a part of the Hindu religion. So I used to learn Urdu so that I thought it was Hinduism. Like my mom used to watch the dramas and she used to be like Bhagwan and she she used to we used to speak like we used to watch Bollywood like Bole Churiya, Bole Kangana, <laughs> Hi Miho <Gai. laughs> Okay, anyways, I digress. So back it up. So we I did, we didn't grow up Muslims, but we understood the concept of God, right? So in two thousand and four we moved into this house, this big massive house somewhere up in the uh, in in up northwest and guys i cannot begin to explain to you how creepy this house was right first of all when we moved in there was hair all over the wall long strands of hair we couldn't get rid of it no matter how much we painted it they would keep coming back we were like where the hell is this hair coming from okay that was number one so my mom decided to super glue my mom literally super glued <laughs> wallpaper onto the walls because the hair wouldn't go away. It just kept coming back, right? So that was number one. Um, then the first encounter we had with spirits. Now, remember, we're not Muslim, so we think we have ghosts in our house. So the first encounter we had was um, we used to have toys that was underneath the table. So we had a table, t a coffee table in the living room. And because my nephew was a baby... He used to come and visit us every summer with my sister. So we had all these toys laid out for him under the coffee table, right? I'm watching the TV one day, this evening, not that late, around six o'clock. I'm sat watching the TV, my head turned that way. Then all of a sudden, all I'm seeing to the corner of my eye is something moving. As I face it, it's a freaking teddy bear looking straight at me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, what? It was a teddy bear just like literally it was, it was a fish it was like a fish teddy bear and it was just literally doing this it was like moving around like a fish yeah it was just like this doing this in in front of my eyes man like in front of my eyes literally it was right eye level and i was just sat there like is this, is this really happening my brother and sister were sat right next to me and they completely lost it they ran out of the room and i was like me being an idiot was like is anyone here <laughs> quite clearly there's someone here and when i said that the teddy bear dropped to the floor I told my mum that she was in the kitchen i was like mom the teddy bear just moved and blah 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 she was like oh it's probably a ghost it's a kid ghost there must be children ghost children whatever in this house we thought it was normal because we kept watching paranormal as well which didn't help and we watched that other one haunted house remember those guys those two people used to go to haunted houses and they would they would um, um, record paranormal activity. Yeah, we used, to do, we used to watch that kind of stuff. Anyways, that was the first encounter. <sighs> then it gets worse, right? But what's so funny? When we lived in the house, the arguments got worse. My mum's health deteriorated when, she, when we moved to the house. Her health got really bad. She started getting abscesses that weren't curable, which was quite weird. She kept getting non-stop abscesses. And then she would end up falling into comas. Now, this is the second weirdest part. When my mum used to go into a, a hypo. So, we call it a hypo. When You know when you're diabetic and you don't get enough food in you and your insulin goes low, your blood sugars drop. If they drop too low, you go into a coma. Now, guys, what happens when you're in a coma? You're sleeping, right? You're not moving. My mum turned into freaking exorcist when she was in a coma. Okay? No joke. My mum would turn into exorcist, right? One time, I remember going up the stairs. My mum was in a coma. I was going upstairs to check up on her, right? I'm 
half up the stairs, I'm, I'm looking through the banister, and like my mum's bedroom's right there, the door's open. I'm like, mum, you okay? My mum, literally, her back was turned to me. Her head did a 360 to look at me, and she started, she just started swearing at me, right? Her head did a 360 all the way around. Her back did not move. Her whole body did not move. Just her head moved, right? <laughs> she turns to me, and I've just stood there, and she's like, you... F this, and she was swearing obviously, swearing a lot. And we're like, okay. Then we called the ambulance. Ambulance came over. It took four guys, guys. <coughs> it took mom. It took my mom. It took four guys to hold my mom down while she was in a coma. Is that normal? Anyways, that was the second encounter. My mom used to have frequent. She used to go into frequent um coma states. And every single time she was in a coma, she turned into like a crazy person. So that was the second encounter. The third encounter was, now this is creepy. This was the most creepiest moment of the entire history of my gin, my gin experience. Um, one day my eldest brother, so there was there was three stories to the, my, my mum's house. Um, so I lived on the third floor and I believe that's where the vortex was, where all the gins kept coming through. And then anyways... So my brother used to sleep in the bedroom next door to me. So it was only me and him on that floor. I was napping, I think. Uh, oh yeah, I was napping, right? My back was turned to the door, but my bedroom door was open. And then my brother walks past my room and just stood, stands and looks at me. And he looks a bit deranged, right? And I look at him, I'm like, Cash, you okay? And then he just goes off into the bathroom. I was like, okay, that was weird. Guys, literally two minutes later, my brother walks up the stairs in his work clothes. And I was like, Cass, didn't you just go to the bathroom? He was like, no, I've been at work. I was like, all right. <laughs> That's the day I panicked. I was like, mom, we need to leave this house. There are crazy people here. I just saw my brother, but it wasn't my brother, it was someone else. Oh my god. Anyways, so um while my mum was really ill, my little brother, Fudge, he started getting really, really sick. He used to have a lot of seizures, right? And um I remember one time after this after I reverted, um I realised that we had gins in the house and I used to play a lot of Quran and when I used to play Quran in the house all my days my mum used to lose her mind. Her mum used to lose her mind. Um, plates used to fly across the room. Doors used to bang randomly. We used to hear like the scraping of chairs across the floor um, from downstairs. A lot of paranormal activity used to happen. And always electricity used to go out. Don't know why. So anyways, my mom, like during my mum's last few months of her life, my brother started having seizures, severe ones. And he used to he used to always look at me like every time I recited Quran, he would get, he would have fallen into a seizure and he would go into a fit. And I was like, okay, this is not normal. But during his seizures, he would be staring at me like he wanted to kill me. So we realized, okay, there's something wrong with this house. Like we already knew. Another thing is, we could never face our back towards the kitchen door. There was something about that kitchen door, right? Guys, it gives me the creeps every time I think about it. But the kitchen door. Like, every time I used to sleep on the sofa, when I used to come and visit my mom, I used to come and sleep, I used to sleep downstairs on the sofa, because I didn't like going up to the third floor. So, when I slept on the sofa, I could never sleep with my back to the door. There was something about that door. It felt like someone was watching me so intently. It was so scary. So, anyways, after my mom passed away, my brother, um, I felt like he got possessed by a gin as well. So, I did a lot of ruki on him. He went for ruki as well. He did ruki on him. So, I was like, alhamdulillah, he's fine now. Um, but there was a, there was like a, apparently, Allah alim, we don't know anyway, but there was like a 2,000 year old jinn apparently, and he said that he's been alive since Ibrahim's times, Allah alim, we know that the jinn's lie, right? So anyways, after all that was said and done, I decided to go back to the house and do ruki on it, because I didn't want anyone to move in there, while there was that kind of energy in there. So I went back to the house. I started doing Rukia. I had my Rukia water. I felt like bloody Ghostbusters, mate. I felt like the Ghostbusters, right? Went into the house. Started spraying water everywhere. A Rukia water. And then I opened the cellar door. That door that was next door to the kitchen door. That The same place that we didn't like looking. I opened that door and I saw, for the first time ever, a smiley face. A winking smiley face. And it was 
pointing, it was looking at a star. So apparently it's like the Seher star. And then we covered it up. I um, sprayed water on it. It started bubbling. And I sprayed water on it. Like look at water. And then anyways, I did look around across the whole house. When I got to the third floor, I started doing looking on it. There was a ladder in like the top. There was like a little office on the third floor. Not an office, but it was like a really small room. And we had like a lot of stuff in there. And there was a ladder in there. And that ladder started violently shaking. Guys, I was stood right next to it. And it was right next to me here. This is a, like I'm stood here and the ladder's here next to me. And it's violently shaking like that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I wasn't really scared. So, okay then. Sprayed it. Kept spraying looking at water. Kept spraying looking at water. And then my eldest brother was living in the house. He was all alone in the house. He didn't want to leave the house for some reason. And then he... <laughs> Subhanallah, he turned like literally. I could see that he was, he was getting affected by the rukia, and at one point he had a coat hanger in his. Guys, I do not know how he got a coat hanger, okay? But he got a coat hanger in his hand, and he was looking at it like, he was analyzing the coat hanger. And then my little brother was with me, and we just took him downstairs, made him do his shahada, made him pray, and then we were like, guys, time to leave, and we bounced, never looked back. Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad I don't live there anymore. But yeah. That's my story, guys. Yeah, man. Crazy, right? Let me know if you've ever had any any experiences like this. I know it's quite late. I hope you're not watching this while you're alone, okay? Don't be having nightmares. Just know you have Allah. Have full trust in Allah. And nothing can ever harm you. Make your du'as as well. Assalamu alaikum.